Hey writer friend, today I want to talk to you about writing your life story and share with you a very simple exercise that can help you get started doing it today. My name is Kelly Notaris. I am the founder of knliterary.com and I am also a book editor who's worked in the US business at some of the biggest publishing companies over the last 20 years. And I've learned a lot during that time that I share with you here on this YouTube channel. So please, if you like this video, go ahead and click the button below to subscribe and you'll never miss a video from me. All right. I want to talk to you today about writing your life story. I want to give you a very simple exercise for doing so, and I've got a bonus for you at the end, so be sure to watch all the way to the end. Why do so many people want to write their life story? The truth is that we as human beings are built to share story, to understand life through story, to make meaning of this kind of crazy existence through sharing our stories with others and hearing other stories. So it makes perfect sense that in today's day and age, when anyone has access to writing a book, so many of us would want to do that. So many of us would want to share the wisdom that we've earned maybe hard one from childhood, maybe through uh, some actual event that happened in our adulthood, the loss of, of someone we loved or some sort of triumph that we accomplished. And we want to share that story so other people can learn and grow from it. So I always say, if life is asking you to share your story with the world, there is a reason and you need to follow it. So I wanna give you a very, very easy exercise. Um, actually, it might not feel easy, but it is, it's very simple exercise today that I want you to actually try to put into practice right now. And in order to inspire you to do so, I actually just did this exercise before recording this video. And I'm going to show you all about how I did it. So I call this my 100 moments exercise, because of course, when you're writing a memoir, you are just relating the moments of your life, the, the ones that are pertinent to a particular theme or a particular story, a slice of your life that you want to share. And you are actually giving those scenes to your reader in a particular order. But before we can choose the order the scenes need to be in, we actually need to know what moments are those scenes made up of. So I want you to set aside any anxiety you might have about not knowing like where your story starts, where it's supposed to end, what exactly you're supposed to include. All of that comes later, all in good time. Many of my clients get really stopped up and don't continue writing because they have those questions that they can't find an answer to before they've even started mining their life for the stories, for those moments that will actually come together like pieces of a puzzle to create a big picture that is very clear for you and the reader. You need to first figure out what those pieces are going to be. So this exercise, the 100 moments exercise is the one I want you to try today. Okay, so what is the exercise? You're going to need to set aside 20 to 30 minutes quiet time uninterrupted. That is really important. So I don't know whether this means going to a coffee shop or whether it means just putting your like sign on your door that says do not disturb, but whatever you need to do, get that sacred time set aside from friends, family, work obligations. Then I want you to, to choose something uh, to write on and with that's not your computer or your iPad or your phone, okay? I really want you to consider writing this one longhand. There's something magical that happens when pen hits page. It almost makes us feel this confidence that we are a writer. So for this particular exercise, I don't mind. I actually write all of my books, all of my blogs, everything that I write, I do on the computer. But this exercise, I want you to write on paper. So you might want to get a large piece of art paper, a poster board, if you like big things in, in big pictures, or you could just use a, a plain piece of notebook paper. Like I said, I just did this exercise and I did it in my journal. So um, I'm just going to do a shout out to my favorite journals. They're called um, Eco Jot journals. They're beautiful. They've got a lot of, of um, pages. They have nice thick lines um, on the pages. This is my favorite type of journal to write in and I write in my journal almost every morning. So I just took my basic journal that I've been using and what I did was I numbered the pages, numbered those lines one through 100, okay? So that's the next step. You've got your time. Now I want you to number the, the either a page or a poster board numbers one through 100. You don't need a lot of space to write because we're just going to be giving ourselves one little clue, one little line of writing that will remind us of a particular moment in our lives, okay? So it can just be one line on the page. I went ahead and, and wrote all the numbers down here and it actually took me four pages because each of these pages has 25 
uh, lines on it and I wanted to do 100. And then I set my timer for 20 minutes, okay? 20 minutes is the minimum. I would say 30 minutes should be the maximum that you give yourself to do this exercise. The point of it is that it's meant to be a stream of consciousness exercise. You're not supposed to think too hard about what you're putting down on the page. In fact, don't really think about it at all. Right now, you're not gonna decide whether you're actually going to include these moments in your book. You're just getting the juices flowing and reminding yourself of all the many interesting eras that you've had in your lifetime, right? So. On my list of 100, I have things all the way back to when I was really, really little. You know, my first my first memory is actually on here, which was of saying goodbye to my mom's dog um, when I was two years old. And the dog, you know, she was, I think, 16 or 17 years old, and they were taking her to the vet to put her down. And I remember saying goodbye to her. That went on this. But all the way up to actually something that happened last week. So it doesn't matter where it is. I don't even know at this point what memoir I'm writing, what era of my life I'm even thinking of, I am just getting the juices flowing. I'm starting to create a listing. I'm starting to open up the vault inside of myself to remember all the interesting moments that I've had. So I sat down, set my timer for 20 minutes, and I got all of these, every one of these, 100 different moments, I got written down in 17 minutes. So I'm a writer, I'm an editor, I have done this exercise before, so maybe it's gonna take you 25 minutes. I don't mind, but I don't want you to think too hard. So a maximum of 30 minutes for this exercise, okay? So then you set the timer, you hit go, and you just start writing. You might write of a sensual memory, a memory of smell, a memory of a sight, um, a moment of seeing your mother kissing a man and you'd never seen him before. Uh, maybe you remember the smell of your grandmother's muffins. Maybe you remember the feeling of your feet walking on grass. These are moments in your life. They are specific to a sense. There's also, I think it's important to choose specific moments. So not necessarily just the yard at my childhood home. You can put that on there, but how about um, that time I stepped on a bee in the yard in my childhood home, okay? I may never include that in my, um, my memoir, you know, maybe I will, but maybe I won't. But it will remind me of a sense memory, a specific time of being in that yard, that when I go back to mind this list, I, just that one note, stepping on the bee in the yard, will open up into the smells, the tastes, the moments that I had in those yards, maybe one really important moment will come to mind. So these are just, you're going to be using these in a variety of ways at a later date. For right now, just choose to write down anything that you remember. So I'm gonna tell you a few of mine so you remember me, um, you, you, so you understand. Okay, so I have hot patio bricks. We had a, a patio at home growing up when I was a little kid and the bricks got really hot in the sun. That led me into remembering a memory of trying to cook an egg on the windshield of my dad's car because I think my dad had said, wow, this windshield's so hot you could cook an egg on it. And the next thing you know, I went out there with a crack and cracked an egg on my dad's windshield. That didn't go over so well, um, but that was a memory that I have. Um, you know, the sand dunes at the camp where I went to camp in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Um, visiting the D D DePaul University and I IU in Indiana, the universities that I went to visit when I was choosing my college. Um, I remember those those times. Um, meeting Nancy, my best friend, and our table. We, we met at a restaurant uh, for a lunch date. We were set up as blind date for our friends, and we, we that table is now our table at that restaurant. So it could be anything, you know? Um, my koi pond, I have a koi pond at the house that I have, that I live in now behind my house. I didn't know that it was there when I bought the house. I'm sure that could turn into a really funny story at some point of discovering when I bought the house that I had a koi pond. Um, so I just wrote down all of these different things. I wrote down Elvis. I fell in love with Elvis when I was 13 years old. Why? I mean, he'd, he'd already died. I have no idea, but I was really into him and there's so much I can mine. I remember the, the feeling of really kind of falling in love with him um, watching a movie that he was in and the, that feeling translating into the boyfriend that I had at the time. There's all different ways that that memory might expand and grow and open up. It doesn't matter right now. I'm just writing down all of the moments, okay? So that is the exercise for you. If you want to do a little bonus point on the uh, on the other side of having written down all those hundred points, let it sit for a little while. Maybe it's a day. Go back and circle the ones that have 
some sort of juice or energy. Usually they're going to be one where that you're kind of afraid to tell the world or one that maybe leads into something that feels shameful to you um, or one that you are worried someone might get mad at you for saying um, or it might be one that just simply makes your heart open. It doesn't matter. It has an aliveness to it. You'll notice when you go back and read through these that some of them are more alive than others. Go ahead and circle the ones that are more alive. Those are the ones you might want to take to a writing session, another timed writing perhaps, and just pull that one out and write about it for 15 minutes without censoring yourself, just to start the juices flowing. This is absolutely ground zero, number one most important exercise you can do on your way to writing your memoir, this 100 moments exercise. I hope that this has been helpful to you to get those juices started, to open the vault of your memories, which will need to be plumbed and explored on the process of writing your book. So I said that there was gonna be a bonus at the end of this video, here it is. If you go down to the description of this video below, you will see a link where you can download my gift to you, a worksheet where the numbers are already listed for you. You just print that off and get started. If it feels even too too daunting. The number 100 can sound kind of daunting. As you write out all those numbers, you might be like, I can't do this. So I want to make sure there are no obstacles standing in your way. You can print out and download that worksheet today and get started. I hope you do. Now, I would love to hear from you. How did this exercise work for you? Um, even does just hearing about it make you kind of scared? Have you done an exercise like this before? How did it help you in the process of working on your book? Please let me know in the comments below. I read and answer every comment that's there. All right, I'm so excited to hear from you. I'm excited to know that you're on the journey toward writing your book and getting your life story onto the page and into the world. If you have any other questions for me, please leave them below. Otherwise, best of luck to you. I hope you'll report back. And in the meantime, happy writing. Hi, my friend. I'm so happy to be talking to you today about how to write a memoir, five books that can help you get started. I'm really excited about this because memoir is one of my favorite genres. I'm Kelly Notaris. I am the founder of KN Literary Arts. I'm also a book editor. I've been working in books for 20 years. I've worked at some of the biggest publishing companies in the United States, including HarperCollins, Penguin, uh, Sounds True. I've worked a lot for Hay House. And now I bring my wisdom directly to you on this YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe below. Okay, today I'm going to be talking to you about how to write a memoir. So many of my clients would like to know. I'm going to give you five of my favorite books to help you get started, plus a bonus tip at the end, so stay tuned. When you are writing a memoir, the most important thing you have to do is actually mine your own experience. And the books that I'm going to be presenting to you today teach you how to do exactly that. So let's get started. The very first book I want to talk about is Your Story by Joanne Fedler. This book, the subtitle I love, How to Write It So Others Will Want to Read It. Such an important thing because when you are writing a book, you know, sometimes you're writing it for your heart or your art and that's fine, but most of us are probably writing a book with the hopes that other people will want to read it. This is an excellent first step on your journey. I love this book because it is, it's all encapsulated in very short chapters. It, it really alternates between inspiration and really giving you permission to tell this story and also very practical advice for how to do it. Garnered from many, many years of writing many books. Joanne is a friend of mine. She's a Hay House author. She has written memoir for years. She has had major success with her memoir writing. And so she actually shows you how to do it. And what I love about it is that she really doesn't, she holds nothing back and she really shows you that you can do this too. She was not a spectacular success story when she got started writing her memoir. I'm not going to give it away, but she really tells the story in a beautiful way and she's very vulnerable about it. So this book actually not only teaches you through the lessons that she teaches you, but through her own story, which I love. So Your Story by Joanne Fedler, book number one. Book number two, Shimmering Images, A Handy Little Guide to Writing Memoir by Lisa Dale Norton. I love this book. There's a couple different reasons. One is very practical. It's tiny. It is easy to read. You are not going to need to spend five weeks plowing through this book. You are going to actually be able to read this book in probably one to two sittings. And honestly, the thing that I find the most important about this book, a lot of the books I'm recommending today have inspiration and they tell you why you can do it, how you can do it. But what I love about this book 
book is the middle section where she actually walks you through the practical teaching she has been teaching for over 20 years to literally thousands of students. It is all in this book. And she's got several, just a handful of incredibly potent exercises that I recommend anyone who wants to write memoir do. So please buy this book. This is a really, really important one. Shimmer Shimmering Images, A Handy Little Guide to Writing Memoir. Okay, that's book number two. Book number three. This book is a gem. Still Writing, The Perils and Pleasures of a Creative Life by Danny Shapiro. So this book is not specifically about how to write memoir. In fact, in a way, it is a memoir of Danny Shapiro's. She is, however, one of the most commercially successful memoirists writing today. And that is why this book is so important in my view. This book will teach you from the perspective of someone who has many best-selling memoirs how to write. It's not going to give you specific step-by-step -step instruction for memoir, but it's going to show you what it means to be a writer. And anyone who wants to write a full-length book needs to understand the, the perils and pleasures that come along with it. It's also just a beautifully written book. It is such a delight. I love this book so much. I highly, highly recommend it. Book number four. Okay. I'm just going to be honest. Out of all of these books, this one is my favorite. The Art of Memoir by Mary Carr. You might be familiar with the name Mary Carr. She's also been, just like Danny Shapiro, a major successful memoir writer of the last 20 years. Um, actually, the last 30 years. She wrote The Liar's Club, uh, Drinking a Love Story. She is truly one of the masters of the genre. She is also incredibly funny, incredibly wise. She's been teaching writing and memoir writing to students for many, many years. And this book truly is a masterpiece. I cannot tell you, I can't talk about it enough. I love it. I think anyone who wants to be writing memoir today, especially if you're writing it because you'd like to sell copies of it, this is a must read. You absolutely have to know what Mary has to say because she truly has, she's interviewed for this book, many of the most successful memoir writers of our time. So it's not just her wisdom, but it's actually uh, an accumulation of wisdom of all the people who are writing memoir and having it really, really work in the world. So definitely recommend The Art of Memoir by Mary Carr, one of my favorites. Number five, my own book, The Book You Were Born to Write. The reason why I'm recommending this book, other than the fact that, hey, it's my book, um, is also because unlike those four books that I just told you, this book talks to you about the publishing business and your options in terms of getting your book into the world. So the other books are specifically about the writing process. So important. You don't have a book if you don't you know, actually write it, but it's also really important to understand the bigger picture, how to market your book, how to create a, a hook that will have people just clamoring to read your story, and then also how to get it out into the world, whether you should try for traditional publishing, self-publishing, how, how to build a platform, form, etc. So this book is really about the practicalities of how to get your book out into the world, plus some really good information about writing. It's not specific to memoir, but it is so applicable to anyone who is writing one. Okay, so those are my top five favorite books that will get you started in writing your memoir. And I want to give you my bonus tip. My bonus tip is to go to your local independent bookseller and ask the wonderful people who work there who are obviously lovers of books and also are watching the books that are selling every day, what are the memoirs that are selling the best right now? That will give you a lot of information about what the market is asking for. And it also will give you great inspiration because the thing is, many of the people who are writing successful memoirs today are just like you. They are not people who've necessarily had, you know, obviously there are celebrities and there are politicians and there are people who actually have a platform of that that magnitude, but there are many, many first time authors that are doing really well with memoir. And you can find out about those memoirs by going and talking to the booksellers who are selling them every day. So that is my final tip. So there you have it. My five favorite books to help you when you want to know how to write a memoir. I would also love to hear from you. What are your favorite books on writing? What are the books that have helped you along the path already? Maybe they're about memoir. Maybe they're not. I would love to know. And so would the other people who are watching this video. So please comment below and let me know. I always read the comments and I always respond. All right, friends, I will be back with you very shortly with more videos about how to keep going on your writing journey. It's important to me that the book you were born to write gets into the world, and I hope I can help. In the meantime, happy writing.
Hello, shameless writers. I'm Kristen McTiernan, the Nonsense Free Editor, here for your twice monthly dose of writing wisdom. So many of you were kind enough to comment on my last video regarding what kind of videos from me you'd like to see, and no surprise, many of you wanted the nitty gritty of memoirs. So today, we're going to talk about a frequent question that I get from memoirists, specifically, how not to get sued. Before we get started, I wanted to specify that this is for writers in the US, as libel laws in other countries can be a lot more onerous. There are three big areas of law writers should be careful of when writing memoirs and autobiographies, regardless of the country they live in, though. They are defamation, invasion of privacy, and fraud. These are the main three grounds upon which someone you featured in your memoir could sue you over. So what do these mean? Defamation is the most common grounds that you might be sued for, and it covers two parts, libel and slander. And you've probably already heard of these just from watching the news. Libel is publishing a false statement that injures somebody's reputation. Slander is verbal, such as giving an interview and saying something untrue about a person. You might remember that Jesse the Body Ventura sued the estate of Chris Kyle, AKA the American Sniper, for both libel and slander. The reason for this was because in his book, Kyle had told a story of fighting an unnamed famous person in a bar and that he just beat him up. Um, in a later interview, I think it was for a radio, he admitted it was Jesse Ventura. Uh, problem. The event in question never happened. It was just a funny story he told, uh, but Ventura didn't think it was funny and he was so incensed that he sued Kyle's estate. And I say estate because Kyle had already passed away, meaning Ventura's lawsuit was taking money from Kyle's widow and his children. Well, telling a falsehood in your book has serious consequences that just might outlive you. It's important to say that the defamed person must be living, so you can't be sued for defaming a dead person. And you don't necessarily need to have identified them by their name in their book in order to be sued. You only need to have enough information that a reasonable person could identify who you're talking to, a person or a business, based on the details that you provide in your book. So if you do that, you might be open to a libel suit. The best way to protect yourself from these suits is to be able to prove you're telling the truth. Um, defamation only applies to lies, so if you can prove that it's true, they can't sue you for it. Opinions are also protected, but they can still be problematic if you don't present enough backup facts for your opinion. So for instance, if you call your pastor a heroin addict in your book, ooh, uh, you're less likely to be sued if you mention that there's money going missing, that your pastor has erratic behavior, and maybe finding unexplained needles. Um, your opinion has to have merit if it is to be protected. You can't just say, oh, I think he's a heroin addict, but then you don't add any backup for it. Parody is also protected, and thank heavens for that. Uh, or the marvelous Based on a True Story by Norm MacDonald <laughs> would never have existed. I, I've talked about that book before. I had to pull over. I was laughing so hard at the audiobook. 10 out of 10 recommend. The next way to get sued is invasion of privacy. And this one is important because private people have the right to be left alone. So unless you're famous or you know famous people, the people you write about are going to be private people, meaning that their secrets and their flaws are generally not for public consumption unless they give you permission. Even if it's true, or especially if it's true, honestly, um, then if you're revealing facts that are not in the public interest, there's a basis for an invasion of privacy claim. Usually invasion of privacy occurs when private facts that are not in the public interest are disclosed. Um, so you've basically intruded into a person's private life. It means that someone is portrayed or even misrepresented in a false light, uh, usually in a highly offensive way to that person. The person in question must also be alive, which is why some of the best memoirs are written after the offending person has died. The reason for this is that invasion of privacy must involve damage to a person's reputation. Being simply embarrassed by these facts is not enough to sue somebody. The person must also have reasonably, reasonably thought that these facts would remain private. So if they have already disclosed the event um, in public somehow, they have no claim. 
In the past, writers have been permitted by the courts to tell their own story for the benefit of the public. And if your own story happens to embarrass somebody else, you will not be found liable. It's only when you tell someone else's story that it becomes kind of murky. Uh, for instance, if you write about being abused by your mother, this is acceptable. But if you include material detailing your mother's terrible childhood based on stories that she told you privately, you might have a problem. Then there's consumer fraud and breach of warranty. Um, fake memoirs and fraudulent autobiographies happen. I'm sorry to say this, but they do. Just Google James Fry if you're too younger to remember him. That's F-R-E-Y. Um, a writer who lies about stories or events that are later discovered to be false runs a really high risk of being sued, usually in a class action lawsuit by readers claiming to have been deceived and possibly the publisher for breach of warranty in, public, in the publishing agreement, as well as, you know, being publicly canceled. So enjoy that. While most cases of fraud due to authors falsifying accounts of their own lives are settled and withdrawn for everybody's sake, um, that's a hassle nobody needs. I mean, most memoirs and autobiographies have numerous falsehoods and inaccuracies, but it's not intentional. Memory can be a sketchy thing, which is why I tell you to talk to other people before you write it down. But that's different than willfully lying about one's life experience, and it has serious legal consequences. Um, don't lie in your book, for heaven's sakes. So other than not lying, <laughs> how do you avoid being sued? Uh, the first step is list the people who are living or dead, who are famous, maybe public people or private people, and examine how your book is going to characterize these people. Um, if you're going to be characterizing them in a negative fashion or in a way that you suspect they wouldn't like, put a star next to their name. Um, if the person is dead, go ahead and share all the secrets you want. Uh, just don't defame the dead person. Make sure it's all true. Um, Sally Field was famously relieved when Burt Reynolds died before the publication of her memoir. That way she didn't have to worry about any defamation. Another way to get out of being sued is consider fictionalizing the true story. Definitely speak to a lawyer regarding who might need to sign a release before publication, by the way. Uh, fictionalize people that you don't think will sign a release or you just plain don't want contact with. Um, in order to fictionalize them properly, you have to obscure any recognizable detail that a reasonable person could use to figure out who they are. And of course, always, always tell the truth. If your memory is compromised because you were a child or due to trauma or due to being in some kind of an altered state, um, try to interview people who have a better grasp on the events in question if there were other people there. Don't disclose people's private secrets. We all have the right to tell our own story in our own way. Don't be the person who tells someone else's secret to make yourself seem more interesting. This is just vile. Even if you're on solid legal ground, we Americans, Westerners, are a litigious people and you might still get sued. So keep records of your research, record interviews, document your fact findings, keep copies for proof that you have not made any negligently false statements. Tape recordings are honestly the best for interviewing or if you're doing a Zoom meeting, record that. Um, if you can't do that, I guess notes. I mean, those can still be presented in court, but audio and video recording is still the best. Definitely use common sense. As tempting as it might be, um, don't use your memoir as revenge. I actually get several of those a year. You are asking for legal trouble. And in one instance, one of the jobs that I got for first editing, uh, y'all, we got subpoenaed because this person said some potentially libelous things, or at least that was what was said uh, in the subpoena. So yeah, good times. And finally, if you're really concerned about it, uh, media liability insurance exists. <laughs> and it may be worth the investment depending on the subject of your memoir, particularly if it's you know a public person you think might sue you. So those are my tips on avoiding a lawsuit for memoirists. Uh, if you wanna discuss it more or get feedback from other memoirists, you can come on over to the Nonsense Free Novelists and experience what I like to call social media for grownups. It's like Facebook, except without 
nonsense because that's kind of my thing. We'd love to have you. So that's all I have for this week. Until next time, take care and write well.